So it's been about three months now since I've had the Steam Deck OLED, which is a refresh to the original Steam Deck LCD model. Now, a lot of different upgrades have been added to this new refresh model, which has now made it a lot more like a console, a handheld console similar to the Nintendo Switch. There's been a lot of different handhelds that have been released over the past year, a lot of powerful handhelds, 7840U um, handhelds, or even the 6800U uh, handhelds. But all of these devices all run on Windows OS, and that's their bane. That's the one thing that's causing them all to suffer from different things like poor battery life or poor user friendliness and all of that stuff. Now, in today's video, I'm going to give you guys three solid reasons why the Steam Deck OLED might be the perfect or just the best handheld for the average gamer right now. First off, the simplicity of using Steam OS on a handheld gaming console has to be one of the best reasons to pick up the OLED Steam Deck. I can bet that most people gaming on a handheld device don't want to deal with constant updates, blue screen errors, and a much more complex UI, which is what you get with Windows-based devices. Some of you might say, why not just pick up a more powerful device like the ROG Ally and then install SteamOS on it? Well, not everyone has the time, the patience, or the technical know-how to accomplish this. The Nintendo Switch has been a hot seller for years in a row, and one of the main reasons for that is its simplicity. On the Steam Deck, it's so easy to find anything you're looking for since the UI is so user-friendly. Steam OS does a great job of simplifying handheld PC gaming and takes a lot of the stress out of it, which is very important. Games are neatly arranged on the screen with details for each one nicely displayed all over the screen whenever you click into a game. Pressing the Steam button on the left side brings up the main menu, which is for the system, whether that's during gameplay or not. From there, you can quickly access the home page, the game library, the Steam store, and a whole lot more. You can also access the system's main settings menu from there, which provides access to a wide array of system controls. The button that's directly opposite to the Steam button brings up a different quick access menu for customizing performance on the fly. Now, just like the Steam menu, this can also be pulled up at any point in time, which is great since you can change things like TDP, limit frame rates, set up FSR, and do much more on the fly. One of my favorite things about the Steam Deck is the quick resume feature. This is something that's either missing or just functions poorly on every Windows handheld that I've ever used. On the Steam Deck, all you have to do is push the power button and the system goes into sleep mode regardless of whether you're in the middle of a game or not. Pressing the power button again will place you right back where you were before going into sleep mode. Now, this is a feature that's invaluable for a device which you'll probably be picking up and putting down a lot. And it works really well on the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck also allows switching between game mode, which is more user-friendly on the handheld, and desktop mode, which is great for doing more back-end stuff or for using a device like a PC. The best thing about this system is that you don't ever have to use the desktop mode if you just want a console-like experience out of it. Keep in mind that Steam OS definitely is not perfect. It does come with its own limitations like the inability to easily run games that use anti-cheat software like FIFA for example. You're also going to have to jump through a bunch of hoops to access Game Pass and other game launchers on it, but it's definitely possible if you're wondering. Steam is one of the biggest game launchers on PC, so you can pretty much find almost every game that you want on there. Something special about the Steam Deck is that it uses a list of verified games to help determine what games will work well on the system. So you already know before you even try playing a game if it's been verified and tested. If you find that most of your games are on Steam or if you're new to PC gaming and don't mind sticking to one game launcher, then SteamOS on Deck is pretty much a no-brainer choice. I mean, you have access to over 14,000 games that are already verified, and the ones that aren't verified, I'm pretty sure you can find a way to get them to run on there. The overall UI and simplicity of SteamOS on deck to me is the best out there on any handheld PC that I've used and will definitely be hard to beat. Hopefully, more handheld consoles begin to use Linux OS as it could be the future of handheld gaming if Windows does not come up with something soon. The screen on the regular Steam Deck was decent, but nowhere near great. The refresh comes with a slightly larger and a more vibrant OLED display and also feels more like the true first generation of the Steam Deck. The use of an OLED panel on it means the screen is much brighter, contrast is much richer, and colors pop much better. OLED panels contain self-lighting pixels that only turn on as needed, so less power is consumed by the OLED model of the Steam Deck in general. Whenever the screen is black or when a dark scene is encountered during gameplay, just know that a whole bunch of pixels are turned off saving battery life in the process. 
This is also how the OLED panels achieve perfect blacks and extreme color accuracy. The screen also has a 90Hz maximum refresh rate, which is great, but only in some cases. The OLED Steam Deck still has the same processor as the original one, which means it still isn't powerful enough to run most AAA titles at super high frame rates. To be honest, the high refresh rate screen will probably only come in handy when playing games that aren't graphics intensive like indies or emulations. I love the new update to the OS with the harmonized FPS limiter and a refresh rate control. This can be adjusted at any time through the quick access performance settings menu and it's great for setting FPS limits on the fly or just tweaking the screen refresh rate at any point. From there, one can also preset the screen refresh rate and FPS on a per game basis, which to be honest, I find to be very convenient. The OLED display also has HDR functionality, which can either be turned on through the in-game settings or through the system-wide settings. It essentially adds an HDR effect that comes with an increase in screen brightness as well as better overall contrast. It really isn't mind blowing from what I've seen so far, but I'm still exploring it. Recently, I've been playing a lot of Uncharted 4 in SDR and HDR modes, and the difference to me visually has not been very noticeable. Keep in mind also that HDR mode drains the battery faster, which is something you may want to conserve on a device like this. Every game I find myself playing just looks so colorful and vibrant on the OLED display to the point where it makes the 800p maximum resolution look like a much higher one. It's something I always notice whenever I switch to a different handheld that uses an LCD display. Exploring Night City in Cyberpunk 2077 has now become one of my favorite things to do on the OLED Steam Deck with colors popping all over the place and dark scenes looking how they're actually supposed to look. The last feature that might sway an average user towards the Steam Deck OLED is battery life. Now, the battery life on the Steam Deck OLED is very tough to beat, even when playing at comparable performance levels on other PC handhelds. Of course, how long it lasts is still very dependent on graphics and performance level being used on the device at any given time. The original Steam Deck came equipped with a 40 watt hour battery, which is the same thing you'll find in the ROG Ally, and that's always been an issue for both devices. The OLED model comes with a bigger 50 watt hour battery, which is not tons more than the original, but with the use of a more battery efficient processor and an OLED panel, battery life on the refresh model is much, much better. Steam is claiming that you can get between three to 12 hours of game time, depending on various factors. And from my experience using it so far, this has been pretty accurate for most games. Keep in mind that pushing the Steam Deck by using high graphics presets, forcing high FPS numbers, or even playing at high brightness levels will affect battery life negatively. I found that to maximize battery life and to find a good balance with gameplay performance on the system, you want to play at conservative settings. In a game like Mad Max, locking the frame rate to 60 frames per second and playing with the normal graphics presets usually nets me between three to four hours on a full charge. And I'll say that's a nice improvement over the 1.5 to 2.5 hours I usually was able to get with the original model. Uncharted 4 is another game I've been playing a lot on it. And in this, I use similar settings, locking frame rates to 60 and using the low graphics preset. On this, I'm able to get about two to three hours on the full charge which is still pretty good, especially for a game like that. GTA 5 is another one I've been loving on the OLED Steam Deck. I usually have this one locked to 60 FPS with moderate graphics presets, and with that, I'm able to get about three to four hours, just like with Mad Max. Only indies and emulations will get you higher than five hours of playtime, but frankly, being able to get between two to five hours consistently playing AAA titles on battery is crazy in my books. I've never been able to get this kind of playtime out of any other handheld PC I've come across to date. And let's be honest, battery life should be the first thing to consider when picking up a handheld gaming device. I mean, sure, the ROG Ally and other 7840U gaming handhelds can run games at higher frame rates and resolution than the Steam Deck, but that's also at the serious cost of battery life. I seem to find myself playing at a similar performance level on the Steam Deck on these handhelds more times than not whenever I bring them around with me, and I still end up with less play time. Moreover, it's only when playing at higher TDPs than 15 watts that they usually outperform the Steam Deck, and also when plugged in, which completely defeats the purpose of a handheld console as far as I'm concerned. Right now, the best way to enjoy the Steam Deck OLED, ROG Ally, or any other handheld while on the go is to use conservative in-game and system-wide settings to prolong battery life. The Steam Deck still excels over all the others when it comes to this because it has a lot of optimizations specifically for that purpose. 
Now, I'm not saying that the Steam Deck OLED is the best and one and done handheld gaming PC for everyone, but right now, it's probably the best option for the average person and for casual gamers. Don't get me wrong, I love that there's a lot of options out there in the handheld PC gaming market, but frankly, they're all suffering from the same issues, which tends to be user friendliness and poor battery optimization from Windows. The Steam Deck OLED right out of the box is an easy to use device, which I'm certain is its strongest appeal. For those people wishing it came with a more powerful chip, think about how that would affect battery life as well. Maybe when battery tech gets better, we can play games with more performance on these little devices. At the end of the day, having options means everyone can get whatever they want, whether it's something as simple and easy to use as the Steam Deck OLED, or something a bit more complicated and sophisticated like all the Windows-based handhelds out there. For me, the Steam Deck OLED definitely isn't my perfect or my ideal handheld, but it's still my go-to for pickup and play situations due to its simplicity. It's still lacking greatly in so many areas, which I hope the next iteration is able to fix, but right now, it's still the most complete package that I found for handheld gaming. Something I really, really dislike about the Steam Deck is that it only has one USB-C port, as I find myself missing the multiple ports that I have on other devices whenever I switch to it. Overall, I think the OLED Steam Deck is a solid first generation product that does a great job of bringing together console level simplicity and PC grade customization. If you're looking for something that embodies a true handheld console gaming experience like the Switch, then right now that's the Steam Deck OLED. Let me know down in the comment section what you like most about the OLED Steam Deck. Anyway, that's all I have for you in this video. I hope you enjoyed watching and I will hopefully catch you in my next video. I'm out, y'all.